Um, so I just wanted to come on here and kind of discuss this topic about how many hours do you sleep? Now, I know there's, I'm, I'm not a scientist or any of that stuff. You know, in this entrepreneurship journey, it's been interesting to discover myself and discover what works for me. Um, I've tried all sort of sleeping things. People that say that you should sleep in in the weekends, people that say that you should have a rhythm, that your body needs to adapt. This whole uh, polyphasic sleep, I tried that as well. It was something like sleeping four hours during the day and then taking three 20 minute naps throughout the rest of the day. Um, and you know, I think you just need to find out what works for you. Um, ultimately, I think the research is out there that shows, you know, six to eight hours of sleep is beneficial um, in a lot of ways. Uh, but I wanted to take this to the next level. I kind of spent about two hours today researching uh, what I can find on this topic. And um, this is what I found. Nothing, right? And it seems very weird to me because sometimes we have these ideas that are in our heads and we don't put them down on paper or we don't share them with other individuals. So then we can't really express ourselves. And then some genius or some crazy person, as sometimes we view them, comes up with this concept. And then you're like, well, how come I didn't think of that? So I'm not saying that this is original for me. I'm just saying I spent about two hours uh, today searching some things and I wasn't able to find something. So as of right now, these are my thoughts. This is what I'm trying and this is what is working for me. You can try out something different and if you find what works for you and if you're happy with that, that is the best thing that you could do for yourself. But let me show you, right? How many hours do you sleep? So one of my questions that I started with this is, does the Bible say anything about sleeping? And I guess I can't drag these papers because then I'll erase it. So I looked into some of those things. It says, you know, certain uh, parables about sleeping and having a bad heart. So, you know, you're going to sleep with all these problems in your head and you're not really happy, all that stuff that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about like, does it say specifically how many hours or what our sleeping schedule should be? There's a whole bunch of scientific research out there as to what happens to our body when we sleep, everything from the balance of our hormones, cortisol levels. Uh, when I was studying a little bit more and I'm starting to get back into it, studying more about fasting, what happens with your ghrelin hormones, what happens with your insulin, all that stuff. So there's plenty of scientific knowledge. And again, you have to try what works for you as to what happens to your body. But my question was, was there something in, in time that related to the Bible? And I couldn't find anything. So then I started thinking to myself, well, what if we take this concept of tithing, right? Of giving back 10%. If you're a believer, if you're a practitioner, if you're not, whatever the scenario is, just hear me out. Tell me if you have a different opinion and let me know what you think. But this concept of tithing is giving back something in appreciation that you understand doesn't belong to you, but you appreciate that you got it, so you're giving it back. So if you're a believer, if you're a follower and you tithe, and you say, okay, well, what about our time? Do we tithe our time? And that's when I got into this whole, you know, the 10% and uh, figuring out like, oh, well, can we, you know, apply this thing to time, the whole tithing concept? So what am I talking about? I'm talking about 10%, right? Obviously, if we have in today's modern science, we've measured out that, you know, there's 24 hours in a day. Again, I'm not going to get into the whole Jewish calendar explanation and how it's a perfect 360 days and all that concept, but just hear me out here. So let's take this thing time, right? So when we look at time in the Bible, right, what can we agree at least on this? That in Genesis, they talk about creation, okay, which is seven days. So a week, 
And then they talk about this one day of rest, which is Sabbath, the Saturday. So that's 24 hours, right? If we rest 24 hours, that is one day rest. So I took this thing even further and I started thinking, well, if we're tithing our money, if we're tithing our efforts, if we're showing that with 10%, can we apply this concept to time? So just follow me here. If you have one week, right? So one week we know is seven days, right? So you take seven days and you multiply it times 24 hours and you get 168 hours. Then when you take 10% of that, you tie that, you get 16.8 hours. So this concept here of the 16.8 would be the whole concept of the Sabbath day if you're tithing the Sabbath day, it's gonna be 16.8 hours. So, what did that let me to do? Well, I said, okay, what if we take the 24 hour day and subtract 16.8 hours? We have 7.2 hours left. That translates into seven hours and 12 minutes. I don't know if this works, okay? This is like my third day doing this and I just got this feeling today that I wanted to share this concept in this video of what I'm trying out, of what's working for me. Um, it's funny because now that I'm in my third day of doing this, I actually woke up before my alarm clock. So by like the seventh hour, I was already rested. I had more energy. I had more clarity. Whether I'm believing that this concept works whether it's because I believe in this whole tithe concept, whether it's because I'm taking modern science and saying if we have 24 hours in a day and we have 168 hours in a week, I tithe my Sabbath, which is 16.8 hours, and the rest of the time is 7.2. I don't know. This is a crazy concept, right? All I know that this, so far, I'm on the third day. This is working great for me. Um, this is the cool part about this documentation process because a year from now, two years from now, if I continue this process and it continues to work for me, I can come back and say, well, I, I figured out how many hours I need to sleep. So that leaves you with the challenge of figuring out how many hours you need to sleep. Look, I know people that sleep like 12 hours a day and they work for like two hours and they are so efficient in what they do in that two hour period. And again, the activities that they are involved in, they just have to work those two hours in order to get to the comfort level where they are, right? So I know Ty Lopez talks about this all the time where we have to work smarter, not harder. And then there's a whole bunch of other writers that talk about efficiency, productivity versus just hours and hours on end. Look. If you work 16 hours a day and the most you can make trading your time for money is a hundred bucks an hour, right? That's $160 per day times, let's say you have a five day week, that's 800 bucks. Okay, so that's work, that's, sorry, no, that's $8,000. No, am I right? Yes, $100 per hour times 16 hours is 1,600 times five days a week, that's $8,000, right? So. That's $8,000 a week over 52 weeks, you'll make 400 grand. So those are the numbers, right? I, I can't put it any other way. So if you have a job that's paying you $100 an hour and you continue trading your time and you can make this whole 16.8 hours, that is, or 16 hours, that is what you're going to make. Like, I don't know how else you could do the numbers differently. The only things that are gonna change is when you have performance of what you provide over that hourly time where you can spend an hour and earn 50, $100,000 versus spending, you know, 16 hours times X amount of hours to get you to that same result. So trading your hours for time isn't going to work. So understanding this whole time concept is the same exact thing. Like figure out how many hours you need to sleep. Like I said, some people sleep more, some people sleep less. I know a bunch of people that are in the military that, you know, once they got on that routine, they were waking up at four o'clock in the morning, but at the same time, they're usually in bed by nine o'clock or 10 o'clock kind of at the latest. So again, they're getting anywhere from six to seven hours. 
And this varies, don't get me wrong. There might be some days where you're working on a project or you're on vacation or you're jet lagging, so you're getting adjusted to the time. So you might only get four or five hours. And then I don't know if you compensate because based on some of the research I've done, the body can't really compensate for the time. So this is just a weird concept. Again, I, I spent a couple hours doing some research. I couldn't find anything. This is how I applied this concept. This is how I'm going to continue to try this and continue to adjust it so it works for me. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you're trying. And until next time, I'll see you on the next video.